Hi everybody, this is Deacon Bill Carter from Sacred Heart Parish in La Plata, Maryland. Today I'm not at my parish, I'm at the beautiful new chapel here at the Carmelite Monastery in Port Tobacco, Maryland, not too far away from my parish. This is the oldest Carmelite Monastery in America. It was formed in 1790. But today what I want to talk about is the diaconate itself. I get a lot of questions about the diaconate and what deacons are, what we do, um, how we're formed, all those things. And uh, usually someone will come up to me after Mass and say, hey, Father, can you tell me? And then that's the, that's the opening door right there because we're not called Father, we're called Deacon. And so what we are, we are members of the clergy. We're ordained to the sacrament of holy orders, the same as priests and, and, and bishops, but to a different level of that order. We are, we are configured to Christ the servant, not Christ the high priest. So we are there to serve in hospitals and in, in uh, nursing homes and prisons and, and that type of ministry. But our history goes all the way back to the Acts of the Apostles and the Bible itself. In chapter 6 of Acts of the Apostles, we see the, the apostles, who are our first bishops, were getting too busy to do all the work they had to do. So they asked the community to, to choose from among them seven reputable men who would be ordained for this service. So they did, and within the very same chapter, one of those seven men, St. Stephen, becomes our first martyr after he gives a great oration, a great talk, uh, when he speaks truth to power and he's put to death for it. So we see that they were ordained for service, but very quickly they move into preaching as another one of their ministries. Two chapters later, we have Philip, another of the seven, who's moved by the Holy Spirit to go out on the road to Gaza, and he sees a man driving a, a chariot, and it's an Ethiopian man who's a servant to the queen of Ethiopia, and he goes up and he sees that he's reading, and he says, do you understand what you're reading? And he says, how can I, unless somebody explains it to me? So he sits with him, he explains what he's read, it's from a book, from, a reading from Isaiah, and then he says, well, what would prevent me from being baptized now? So they stop the chariot, they see some water, and he's baptized. So they've gone from serving a table to, to preaching, from preaching to teaching, from teaching to baptizing. And the ministries are starting to build up on what the, what the, the deacons do. Later on, as uh, the centuries moved on, we see that they, the deacons are really becoming very important in the diocese that they serve in. Uh, even within the Bible, we see the letter to the Philippians, St. Paul addresses the deacons in a very respectful way because they'd been, mo they'd been moved up in, their, in, their, in their, their status to be very important people. They did a lot of the administrative work in, in the, the, uh, their, their dioceses uh, where they served. Um, the, many of the early popes didn't necessarily come the same path that we see them now. Today, they all come from the College of Cardinals. But back then, a lot of deacons were elected pope. They had to then be ordained as priests and bishops before they could take the role, but they were elected while they were still deacons. In fact, within a 250-year period in the early church, of 37 men who became pope, 34 of them were deacons when they were elected. As time moved on, a lot of, especially after the Council of Nicaea, the bishops were giving a lot of those roles that they had pre previously given to the deacons to the priests. And the role of the diaconate as a, as a standalone ministry, if you will, sort of declined and it became a transitional step on the way to priesthood. And to this day, we have one order of deacons, but we do have two sort of uh, paths, if you will. There's the permanent deacons, men like myself, who are going to be deacons presumably for the rest of my life, and then you have transitional deacons where there's an expectation that they will soon be ordained to the ministry of the priesthood. So now that this ministry was being part of becoming a priest, it had essentially vanished for about a thousand years. During the Council of Trent, which was a response to the Protestant Reformation, it had been discussed bringing it back, but it really went nowhere. It, it stayed that way for another several hundred years until the most unlikely of places it was brought up again among prisoners in the Dachau prison camp in Germany during World War II. There were Catholic men who were prisoners there who were, they called themselves the Deacon Circle. And they talked about what things deacons could do to serve other people. When they were released from the prison camp after the war, they went back to their countries and they talked about this. This talk became sort of an international group and it got the attention of the council fathers of the Second Vatican Council in the 1960s. They brought, they brought that to the discussion. It was then passed that the permanent diaconate would then become uh, a, a, another, a ministry of, unto itself again. And in 1967, St. Paul, uh, St. Pope Paul VI made it a, a permanent, the made, reestablished the permanent diaconate as a standalone ministry. And to this day, we have that now. Our formation is about, four, depending on the diocese, four to five years of graduate study, of pastoral work, lots of prayer and discernment, and we're assigned to all the parishes within our diocese. Thanks a lot for listening. God bless.